Well, good morning to you. Welcome to Tuesday, the 2nd of March and our service of morning prayer, uh, which this morning honours Chad, the Bishop of Litchfield and missionary who died in 672 AD. So I'll tell you a little bit more about him in a moment. But first to say hello to all of you lovely people who are joining me this morning. Um, who was first in? Uh, first was Anne Walker. You win again. Well done. And then Stefan and Moira and Barbara and Charlie and Val and Lynn and Ange, Chris, Celia, Jackie and everyone else who's watching this morning. Good morning to you and I hope you're having a lovely morning so far. Um, it's a bit misty out here in uh, Newquay. I don't know how it is where you are. Um, how is it on the south coast, uh, Ange? How are you doing down in Falmouth? Um, but uh, still, it's, you know, warm enough, not bad for spring and uh, enjoying the uh, gradual warming of the land. Uh, I, I think we all are. So today we are remembering Chad, Bishop of Litchfield. So let me tell you a bit about Chad. Because, of course, this period in English history was uh, a fascinating period when uh, the Romans basically came in and took over um, from the um, ancient uh, Celtic church that had been prevalent in the islands um, before, beforehand. So Chad. Chad was born in Northumbria, the youngest of four sons all of whom became priests and monks. They entered the monastery on the Isle of Lindisfarne and were taught, taught by St Aidan. Chad's brother, Kev, had founded the abbey at Lastingham and on his brother's death, Chad was elected abbot. During the confusion in ecclesiastical discipline, which is a polite way of putting it, between the Celtic-oriented Anglo-Saxon hierarchy and the pressure from Rome for conformity, Chad became Bishop of York for a while. He graciously stepped back with the arrival in Britain of Theodore, who doubted the validity of indigenous con consecrations. This was eventually rectified and Chad became Bishop of Mercia, a huge diocese, the centre of which he had moved, he had moved from Repton to Lichfield. Chad travelled extensively and became much loved for his wisdom and gentleness in otherwise difficult situations. The plague was prevalent at this time and Chad died on this day in the year 672. And uh, Chad was very famous amongst uh, in, in the northeast and one of the colleges at Durham University, where I first uh, went to uh, college, uh, it, one of the colleges there is the College of St. Chad. Um, so um, he's remembered in the college in the university there as well. There's quite an interesting passage reading here um, from the Venerable Bede um, who wrote about uh, Chad. Um, quite an interesting story. I, I think while, while we're all coming in, um, we might have a listen to this story. It's quite an interesting one, not too long. Um, so take yourself back to the 7th century and uh, King Alfred, lovely Anglo-Saxon name, sent the priest Wilfred to the king of the Gauls to be consecrated bishop for himself and his people. He was detained overseas for a considerable amount of time on account of his consecration and King Oswy sent to Canterbury to be consecrated bishop of York, a holy man, modest in his ways, learned in the scriptures and zealous in carrying out their teaching. This was the priest named Chad, a brother of the most reverend Bishop Kev, who at that time was abbot of the monastery at Lastingham. On arriving at Canterbury, they found that Archbishop Deus Dedit, great Latin name, had died and that no successor had as yet been appointed in his place. They therefore went to the province of the West Saxons, where Wine was bishop, Wine or Wine, um, he con consecrated Chad with the assistance of two bishops of the British. So that's why uh, when Theodore arrived, he wasn't trusting of these indigenous consecrations of bishops. He thought that it should only be done properly, properly by people from Rome. 
Um, and so when he became bishop, Chad immediately devoted himself to maintaining the truth and purity of the church and set himself to practice humility and temperance and to study. After the example of the apostles, he travelled on foot and not on horseback whenever he went to preach the gospel, whether in cities or country districts, in towns, villages or strongholds. For he was one of Aidan's disciples and always sought to instruct his people in the ways and customs of his master Aidan and his own brother Kev. Later, however, when Theodore of Tarsus was consecrated Archbishop of Canterbury, he was asked to judge between Wilfred and Chad. When he informed Bishop Chad that his consecration was irregular, uh, the latter replied with the greatest humility, If you believe that my consecration as bishop was irregular, I willingly resign the office, for I have never thought myself worthy of it. Although unworthy, I accepted it solely under obedience. At this humble reply, Theodore assured him that there was no need for him to give up his office and himself completed the consecration according to the proper Catholic rites. So there we are. That's how uh, Chad ended up becoming a bishop according to the proper Roman Catholic rites um, and not those dodgy indigenous uh, British ones. So let's turn back to our service sheet now. Um, hopefully you've found a copy of it. If you'd like to follow along, I put a link in the chat window. Um, Ange says it's foggy south coast. So there we are, foggy. Hello to Chris and uh, <clears throat> to uh, anybody else who is joining us for this service of morning prayer. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love. According to your judgment, give us life. Blessed are you, God of compassion and mercy. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn, and your healing springs up for deliverance. As we rejoice in the gift of your saving help, sustain us with your bountiful spirit and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Have mercy on me, O God, in your great goodness. According to the abundance of your compassion, blot out my offences. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my faults and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So that you are justified in your sentence and righteous in your judgment. Cast me not away from your presence. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. <coughs> Excuse me. Give me again the joy of your salvation and sustain me with your gracious spirit. Then shall I teach your ways to the wicked and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from my guilt, O God, the God of my salvation. And my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. Psalm 50 The Lord, the Most High, Mighty God, has spoken and called the world from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes and will not keep silence. 
consuming fire goes out before him, and a mighty tempest stirs about him. He calls the heaven above and the earth that he may judge its people. Gather to me my faithful who have sealed my covenant with sacrifice. Let the heavens declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. I will testify against you, O Israel, for I am God, your God. I will not reprove you for your sacrifices, for your burnt offerings are always before me. I will take no bull out of your house, nor he goats out of your folds. For all the beasts of the forest are mine, the cattle upon a thousand hills. I know every bird of the mountains, and the insect of the field is mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the whole world is mine, and all that fills it. Do you think I eat the flesh of bulls, or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and fulfil your vows to God Most High. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you shall honour me. But to the wicked, God says, Why do you recite my statutes and take my covenant upon your lips, since you refuse to be disciplined, and have cast my words behind you? When you saw a thief, you made friends with him, and you threw in your lot with adulterers. You have loosed your lips for evil and harnessed your tongue to deceit. You sit and speak evil of your brother. You slander your own mother's son. These things have you done, and should I keep silence? Do you think that I am even such a one as yourself? But no, I must reprove you and set before your eyes the things that you have done. You forget you that forget God, consider this well, lest I tear you apart and there is none to deliver you. Whoever offers me the sacrifice of thanksgiving honours me, and to those who keep my way will I show the salvation of God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first reading continues our readings from the book of the prophet Jeremiah, from chapter 8. At that time, says the Lord, the bones of the kings of Judah, the bones of its officials, the bones of the priests, the bones of the prophets, and the bones of the inhabitants of Jerusalem, shall be brought out of their tombs, and they shall be spread before the sun and the moon and all the host of heaven, which they have loved and served, which they have followed, and which they have inquired of and worshipped. And they shall not be gathered or buried, they shall be like dung on the surface of the ground. Death shall be preferred to life by all the remnant that remains of this evil family in all the places where I have driven them, says the Lord of hosts. You shall say to them, thus says the Lord, when people fall, do they not get up again? If they go astray, do they not turn back? Why then has this people turned away in perpetual backsliding? They have held fast to deceit. They have refused to return. I have given heed and listened, but they do not speak honestly. No one repents of wickedness, saying, what have I done? All of them turn to their own course like a horse plunging, plunging headlong into battle. Even the stork in the heavens knows its times, and the turtle dove, swallow and crane observe the time of their coming. But my people do not know the ordinance of the Lord. How can you say we are wise and the law of the Lord is with us, when in fact the false pen of the scribes has made it into a lie? The wise shall be put to shame. They shall be dismayed and taken, since they have rejected the word of the Lord, what wisdom is in them. Therefore I will give their wives to others and their fields to conquerors, because from the least to the greatest 
everyone is greedy for unjust gain. From pr prophet to priest, everyone deals falsely. They have treated the wound of my people carelessly, saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. They acted shamefully. They committed abomination. They, yet they were not at all ashamed. They did not know how to blush. Therefore, they shall fall among those who fall. At the time when I punish them, they shall be overthrown, says the Lord. When I wanted to gather them, says the Lord, there are no grapes on the vine and no figs on the fig tree. Even the leaves are withered. And what I gave them has passed away from them. Why do we sit still? Gather together, let us go into the fortified cities and perish there. For the Lord our God has doomed us to perish and has given us poisoned water to drink because we have sinned against the Lord. We look for peace but find no good, for a time of healing, but there is terror instead. Now we turn to our canticle, the Song of Manasseh. Full of compassion and mercy and love is God the Most High, the Almighty. Lord Almighty and God of our ancestors, you who made heaven and earth in all their glory. All things tremble with awe at your presence, before your great and mighty power. Immeasurable and unsearchable is your promised mercy, for you are God most high. You are full of compassion, long-suffering and very merciful, and you relent at human suffering. O God, according to your great goodness, you have promised forgiveness for repentance to those who have sinned against you. The sins I have committed against you are more in number than the sands of the sea. I am not worthy to look up to the height of heaven because of the multitude of my iniquities. And now I bend the knee of my heart before you, imploring your kindness upon me. I have sinned, O God, I have sinned and I acknowledge my transgressions. Unworthy as I am, you will save me, according to your great mercy. For all the host of heaven sings your praise, and your glory is for ever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen full of compassion and mercy and love, is God the Most High, the Almighty. Our second reading is a much shorter one from the Gospel according to John uh, in chapter 6. The Jews then disputed amongst themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. My flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate when they died, but the one that who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching at the synagogue at Capernaum. Now our responses. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O oh my God, in you I trust. You are the God of my salvation. To you, O oh Lord, I lift up my soul. In you I hope all the day long. O oh my God, in you I trust. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. To you, O oh Lord, I lift up my soul. O oh my God, in you I trust. 
of a gospel canticle, the Benedictus. Christ gave them as a light to the nations, that his salvation might reach to the ends of the earth. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Christ gave them as a light to the nations, that his salvation might reach to the ends of the earth. So before we have our time of prayer, um, there's not a lot I really want to reflect on those two readings. I think one of the Jeremiah one, we've actually had part of that very recently indeed. And I remember talking about the peace, peace where there is no peace. Um, the whole of Jeremiah really is set in the context, as I'm sure uh, you've all learned by now, of the just before the exile to Babylon, uh, when the um, is the well the Judeans in Jerusalem were under threat from uh, the Babylonians who were coming in and demanding tribute, and then when tribute was refused, they came in to conquer. And Jeremiah is consistently telling the leadership that all these things are befalling them because they have failed to obey um, God's will. Um, he does say, you know, God says, "You're giving me all these burnt offerings, but you know, I don't eat." like you do. So I don't need them. What I do need is a sacrifice of gratitude and a sacrifice of uh, justice and mercy to others. Um, so that's the message that uh, God is telling the people through Jeremiah at that time, throughout the whole of Jeremiah, really, that's the consistent message. And so we have more of that uh, today. Um, and then, of course, in the John's Gospel, we hear the passage where Jesus is trying to explain what he means when he says he's the bread of life and anyone who eats eats of me will never die but have eternal life. And everyone's going, well, you know, how can we eat him? Uh, they take it rather literally. Of course, uh, Jesus was uh, thinking metaphorically the bread of his word, the, his message. Anybody who participates in being in communion with what Jesus is teaching is in communion with the community of Christians. Uh, those are the people who Jesus is saying will receive eternal life as their reward. So let's now pray for our communities and for the world. Uh, especially we offer our own gratitude to God that uh, the number of cases of COVID, especially in Cornwall, has now dropped to uh, quite low levels yesterday and the day before there were only eight new cases in the whole of Cornwall, uh, which we haven't seen since uh, just before um, Christmas was the last time we were down to that kind of level. So we give thanks for that and the uh, rapid uh, consequent uh, decline in the numbers who are unfortunately still dying from the disease. So let us pray and give thanks to God for all his gifts for the gifts of the vaccine and those who, through science, developed it, for the gifts of those who are ministering to the sick, who are healing the sick in hospitals, 
We give thanks for all who are working to serve others, whether they are paid or whether they are volunteering. Thank you, Father, for inspiring that love of service in our hearts. Thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit. Help us when we try to turn your religion, your faith into something where we just um, fulfill rules expecting to be blessed. Help us to understand that it's our hearts that need transforming to be like Jesus. And that uh, we have no need for sacrifices of uh, anything other than our own love and gratitude. We remember those, of course, who have died and those who are grieving. Remember those, we remember those families who are struggling with grief, with a sense of regret. Help those who mourn to be merciful to themselves and to one another. To be patient with themselves. Father, bless them and keep them. Hear their words of anguish and help them to find peace. And we, Lord, Lord, we lift up in our hearts those who we know who are sick, those who are struggling with mental health. We speak their names in our hearts. Father, we thank you for the warming days, the greater light, the beautiful sunsets. Help us to remain patient as we wait for our government, our leaders to allow us to leave our homes and to socialise once again. Grant our leaders wisdom as they decide how and when the rules should be relaxed. Thank you for stay, sustaining us over this last year. We thank you for humble leaders, for those who like Chad, were only serving because they were asked to do so, rather than out of any desire for personal gain. May our, all our leaders follow the example of Chad. Almighty God, from the first fruits of the English nation who turned to Christ, you called your servant Chad to be an evangelist and bishop of his own people. Give us grace so to follow his peaceable nature, humble spirit and prayerful life, that we may truly commend to others the faith which we ourselves profess. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Trusting in the compassion of God, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May God, our Redeemer, show us compassion and love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. So thank you for joining me and joining each other for this morning prayer on this Tuesday morning. Uh, it's, if anything, even more misty outside than it was earlier. So uh, um, I hope you all have a uh, blessed uh, day, whatever it is that you're doing. I offer you the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit with you and remain with you and all those you love and care for this day and always. Amen. So farewell to you all. Uh, don't forget tomorrow uh, morning at 11 o'clock will be our online Zoom coffee morning. Um, hopefully uh, as many of you as possible will be able to come and join us for that. We've um, had a fairly stable community that's uh, um, taken part in that, but uh, always welcome to have more people come and enjoy an hour of chat, um, both in large groups and smaller groups. So I look forward to you then. Um, so morning prayer will continue on Thursday morning at nine o'clock. Um, and, uh, and then on Sunday, we have church at four, which is being led by uh, Phil and uh, several other people celebrating St Piran's Day, which is coming, I believe, on Friday. So uh, I look forward to uh, hearing what Phil has for us um, coming from the uh, wonderful Cornish perspective about St Piran when we meet online for church on Sunday. So until then, uh, thank you all for joining us and I wish you all the best. So farewell for now. <laughs>